Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone had a great holiday and a happy new year. Uh, I know I did. Uh, I ate entirely too much. Spoiler. Uh, um, but I had a great, great holiday, great time with my family. And uh, I hope you did as well. I'm going to do a quick one tonight. Whenever I say that, I end up at being like 40 minutes or something, but I really am going to try to keep it tight. Um, I was watching some videos the last couple of days um, uh, from uh, Discourse Minis, and now uh, they have, uh, she has Dungeons and Discourse, which is a new channel, which I will put the link in the description, which I found a very interesting video. Uh, she is still talking about D&D &D 1. And what's going on with that and uh i do think if you're a role player you're interested in that sort of thing interested in where dnd is going i do think it's something you might be interested in taking a look at uh let's see what oh there's a new new guidelines on youtube so like for the first eight seconds or something like that of the video you're supposed to not swear because you might get demonetized, which doesn't do a damn thing to me because I'm not monetized. I hope to be someday, but not today. So, Dan Slot is a fucking idiot. There, we just got that out of the way. Um, you may not know who Dan Slot is. Chances are you probably don't know who Dan Slot is. Um, he is the Buddy Hackett of Marvel Comics. He actually looks like Buddy Hackett, if you know who Buddy Hackett is. If you don't, I just like aged up like the mummy guy from uh, the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, Dan Slott's a writer for Marvel. He's a pretty C-level writer. Um, he's the guy who came up with the idea of uh, Superior Spider-Man, which was a cool idea and some pretty cool stories. Uh, I first noticed him on Marvel 2-in-1 with the thing way the hell back. And um, he's written a lot of uh, a lot of comics. And he's a sad, sad little man. He blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't say a damn thing to him until he blocked me on Twitter. But because of some of the people I follow on Twitter, he decided he needed to preemptively block me. Dan Slott is an idiot. He's a fucking idiot. There, it feels good. It feels good. It feels good. New year, new me. Fuck Dan Slott. Um, so anyways, that was that was kind of interesting. And, and we might go over that at some future point, but that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about today. What I wanted to talk to you about today was um, I found a really interesting article from a writer that I'm not familiar with. Um, oh, by the way, um, Mr. Hearn, I think it's Judd Hearn. I believe I did a video on him talking about him trying out Neil Gaiman's uh, process for a week to see how it helped him with writing. He's trying to finish a manuscript. He did another uh, video uh, talking about him taking some advice from Stephen King, and he did actually manage to finish his, his first draft of his manuscript uh, with King's advice. So I may do something on that too, because I thought it was a really cool little video and um, I'll do that another day. But what I wanted to talk about today was um, this author, who I am sorry to say I am not familiar with. Uh, her name is Destiny Soria. Soria? Soria? Soria. There she is, right there. So you can see it. <laughs> you can figure out how to pronounce it. Um, she uh, did an article for Tor.com about how fantasy role-playing made me a better writer. And there was some really interesting stuff in here that I thought I would kind of touch on with you just briefly. Um, her current work is a YA fantasy called Fire with Fire, which I'm betting if she's doing a piece for Tor, it's probably out now or will be out shortly. That's I did a couple of these for Tor myself back in the day, and usually... Uh, they'd asked me to do an article around the time that one of my books was coming out so they could get a little, you know, cross promotion going. And they were fun. I had some good time. I had a good time doing some of these. Um, 
But what Destiny Soria? Soria? Um, I am so sorry. If Destiny, if you ever see this or hear about this, I apologize. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. And um, that's just uh, sorry. But uh, I did find your article very interesting. And I wanted to share it with my with my people here. Um, she talks about three areas in which role playing. She, one of the things I thought was really interesting to do is she talked about how um, in high school she really wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons, but she thought only the cool people played Dungeons and Dragons. That is such a weird alternate universe for me. It is a completely bizarre parallel universe because um, I ran a D and D game before homeroom in the cafeteria at my high school, I actually, I think I ran in middle school and then in high school. Oh, and uh, a dear friend of mine, Sean, he was a football player, came over one morning, I guess after they had finished up their practice and was like, what are you guys doing? And he became really enamored of D&D, started playing it a lot. Uh, he ended up uh, doing uh, master's and I think doctorate work on uh, Tolkien, uh, and he started the uh, D&D club at our high school, the Gold Dragon Society, Shades of the Hellfire uh, Club, <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, the whole concept of D&D was only for the cool kids, um, oh, you sweet, charming zygote, um, that's a whole other story for another day, um, we rule the world now, uh, us geeks. Uh, I would I would posit the theory that there are still people who hate and don't understand geeks, don't understand D and D, don't understand comics, don't understand science fiction movies. They 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 kind of pretend like they do because now that's the cool thing. But um, if you look at something like Big Bang Theory that was just like a real surface skin of geekdom. It, it honestly was, it was like, Hey, let's do a sitcom about geeks, uh, something, something, uh, world of Warcraft, something, something Marvel comics, you know, um, what kind of shill science fiction person can we get in it? No, Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton. Um, so anyways, and, and don't get me wrong. I enjoyed big bang. I, I laughed at a lot of the stuff, but, it was it was very clear that there that was not they were not of our tribe they were just trying to do like an uh, anthropology assignment on our tribe so anyways what destiny talks about here is three areas that she thinks that uh fantasy role playing in particular D, &D uh helped her with her writing and I have to admit, I do. I, I get that a lot, too. I've, I've had that since the, the first book, since Six Gun. Um, I've had people say, hey, this reads a lot like a role-playing game. And, you know, I've been gaming since I was probably 12 years old. So uh, that would be back before language was invented. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do think that role-playing can be a very useful tool uh, to get hone some of your storytelling skills both as a player and as a dungeon master. Yes. Um, first thing she talks about is character creation. To have a fully realized character in a role-playing game, it takes a little work. You have to do a little, you know, thinking about what you want the character to be like, what their backstory is, what's important to them, what isn't important to them. And you have the alignment system there, which is a uh, handy for kind of, you know, short, short note as to, you know, this person is moral and principled. This poor person is, is kind of freewheeling and, you know, does what they, they think is best, regardless of the consequences. This person is an amoral monster. You know, you have your alignments that kind of help you work with that. And um, that's all work that if you done any fiction writing you know you have to build a character every uh time i introduce a new character when i do the chapter summary which we'll get to a little bit of that in a second too um the uh i, I write out the full description of the character their backstory what they're about all their deepest darkest secrets all that stuff and what's interesting is you know it's shorthand and it helps 
but you also develop as you play these games your character changes maybe their their view view of things change uh how they they view the world how they view all their characters may change based on on the events they go through which again if you've been writing fiction that's something that your character is supposed to go on a journey and is supposed to you know very few care you know very few people start life the way they end life they 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 change morph sometimes good sometimes bad usually a little bit of both um over the course of their lives and and character creation in these role playing games can really help you to focus on that stuff and you can bring some of that into your writing there are whole books separate from D&D that are nothing but quizzes for your character and tables to roll on for your character to to come up with you know your backstory uh, come up with you know a fully realized character and uh that is handy in D D. it'll it'll increase your enjoyment and your fellow players and your dungeon master's enjoyment of your character and it's also very handy as a writer because building characters that seem real and that people can get invested in is literally more than half the battle uh, to to getting someone to be engaged with your writing. Next up, she talks about improv and collaboration. Um, letting your character off the chain, which I think many of us who have written fiction, you, you know, like I said, I, I do a little summary before I write the chapter. So many times, the character just it, like pulls on that leash and goes, no, 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 I'm going this way. And um, it can be a little scary sometimes, but I actually think it has almost a, a magical uh, quality to it of you're creating something the whole cloth out of your mind. Grant Morrison goes into this a lot. Um, you're creating something whole cloth out of your mind and then you're, it, it's kind of like, building into something that's not entirely under your control which is fascinating the very first novel i wrote which if i haven't mentioned lately i think we're far enough into the video was a piece of shit um it will never see the light of day there were bits and scraps and characters in it that i've used in other things but it was a piece of crap um maybe someday if i'm just really feeling you know masochistic i will go back and revisit it but um there was a character who was very specifically supposed to die in a certain chapter. And she basically told me, no, <laughs> no, she wasn't going to die. She was going to fight her way out of this thing. And the process save another character who was supposed to die in that chapter. And I just rolled with it. And while it was a piece of shit, that particular chapter was like alchemy to me. It was amazing to see that happen. And in role-playing games, you have this amazing kind of feedback going. I just put up a notification to my players for the Amber diceless role-playing game that I run every two or three months. And the next session is coming up. It's called the Blackfire Throne. And I'm very excited about it. I, I love Amber. And it's a great pure storytelling role-playing environment. Uh -huh. That collaboration can do amazing things for you in writing if you're willing to take that risk because you really are you take a piss in the wind because you have your plot you may have an outline you may have it all nailed down but something in the process of writing something in that character that you work so hard to craft and make real is like no i need to do this not that if you can listen to that roll with it i'm not going to you know i'm not going to guarantee you it's always going to work i'm not going to guarantee you that it's going to go where you want to go it may lead you into a blind alley and you're just like screwed but it may not it may lead to some amazing things that you would never have thought of yourself and i know you're thinking you're saying i i did think of this it's my head it's my brain but there's a there is this magical kind of twilight realm when you're really into your story and you're really into your characters and you know what your characters think, you know what they're going to say, you know how they would react. Uh, there have been a lot of times where I've written parts of chapters and just like toss them because I'm like, no, this is not right for this character. 
This is not how this character would behave. This I'm forcing this. I'm forcing the character into my plot. And I don't think that's a, a good way to go. Listen to your characters. Your characters are more important than your plot. I'm just going to say that. that. That is my personal opinion. You, plots, even if you have the most amazing original plot, it's probably been done before by somebody in some other way. That doesn't mean you can't have a new take on it. That's the whole point of writing is take something that's been done, take a story that's been told a thousand times and tell it a thousand and one times a different way. But a big part of making that happen is your characters. So listen to them. Don't be afraid to improv. Don't be afraid to like, you know, like jazz. I've always thought writing was a lot like music, that there has beats and it has a rhythm and a flow. And when you when you're in that space, it's it is magic. It, it's amazing. And when you're not, it's like clunky notes. You can just someone's hitting a bad note. And uh and you need to you need to kind of you know let that improv go a little bit. Don't be afraid. The worst thing that happens is you save what you did and you go back and you start over again. And maybe you find some things in that that improv session that that basically really add something to your book, add something to your story that wasn't there before. Um, my dear friend, Dave, he is the godfather to my kids. David um, and I can just riff on, as long, as long as we've known each other, we can just start talking about something and we start bouncing ideas off each other. And um, he was uh, instrumental in a lot of things that came up in Queens Road. He, uh, he was a huge help in that. Uh, he's big into the Amber game and he comes up with these amazing ideas. And then, and one of the things I was going to mention that um, Destiny Soria, I'm going to go with Soria or Soria, uh, Destiny. One of the things Destiny mentions is don't be afraid of that. You know, yes, this happens and then this happens, which brings us back to what we talked about with Mauler many, many videos ago which if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend you do. Uh, talking about the, um, instead of it being like this happens and then this happens, it is, you know, this happens, but because that happens, this happens. Or, you know, this happens and this happens. You, you don't just have events just happen for no reason. There's cause and effect. And if you can kind of, let things play out and i'm not i mean and for some folks i mean for me i've got a plot i know where i want to go in my story um but if you get into that alchemy if you get into that magic place where your characters are talking to you and arguing with you take a little time and listen to it because it really might get you somewhere that you would not normally have gotten to by just following your your notes it is part of the magic and the alchemy of writing and i know that sounds so <laughs> but i really do believe there is magic in storytelling i believe that that there is something magical about creating people just whole cloth out of your out of your imagination um and uh the last thing she talks about uh is the art of storytelling uh Story to you know, you know, art is storytelling, life is storytelling, is one of the things she mentions, and I totally agree with that. Um, you draw on your own personal experiences, you draw on your own personal emotions and relationships as you write. It doesn't matter if you're writing a fantasy, if you're writing about a galactic empire a million years in the future, you're talking about living, breathing, thinking, feeling characters. And they're going to respond to things, you know, and you, 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 I mean, and you may have characters who are way off the reservation. They may be nothing like humans and that's okay too. But it, that challenges you with the, with the little thought experiment. How would they react to love? How would they react to jealousy or anger, vengeance, hatred, compassion, how, how would those things affect them? And, and it really stretches your brain. It stretches, you know, the, the, the edges of your experience, but use that experience. You don't write in a vacuum. I think a lot of people who write 
Um, and writing is a very solitary job. You know, I'm sitting in an office. I'm going to be working on uh, Golgotha Five after I finish this up alone in in my in my little office, and me and my me and the pe- me and the people in my head. Um, it can be sometimes hard to tap into your emotions and your emotional state. Um, try really hard to do that. The improving and the listening to your characters can go a long way with that. Um. So she does talk a little bit about uh, some of the stuff DMD has done recently, as far as like um, getting rid of, you know, set alignments for, you know, certain races and stuff like that, species, changing race to species and a bunch of other stuff. I, I'll be really honest. I've been playing this since I was 12 years old. I've been playing it. I've played every version of DMD there is to play. I have never, ever played in a game as far back as the seventies where if the referee did, if the referee wanted to have a lawful good goblin, he'd have a lawful, lawful good goblin. If he wanted to have, you know, a a dark lord with a heart of gold, he would have a dark lord with a heart of gold. It it is it is a product of storytelling. Trying to codify it to me is a little ridiculous. It it seems a little bit like virtue signal, signaling, but to each their own. Uh, I do totally agree with her on the fact that stories have power and that stories can affect people and that you should use that power for good. However, I would also say that, you know, to tell some stories are not good. Some characters are not good and you can't handy coat that. You, you, you can't, you're doing a disservice to your reader and you're doing a disservice to yourself and to your story. If someone is a racist piece of crap, you write them like a racist piece of crap. If they are uh, ignorant and and transphobic, homophobic, whatever, you write them that way. I got dinged by a guy. Uh, he's a Chinese American. I do not recall his name. He wrote some uh, some steampunk stories, and he called me out on uh, my Golgotha books because I had racism in them, and I do. The 1870s, 1860s, 1870s. Guess what? Spoiler alert. There was a lot of racism and sexism and homophobia. And I'm not going to try to write a historical fantasy. Um, Now, if it's some parallel world and there's some explanations for why those things aren't around, good on you. That's not what I'm writing. And um, you can call me whatever names you want. Um, I'm going to be true to my story. I'm going to be true to my characters. And uh, one thing I've always tried to do is whenever I have racist or sexist or whatever show up, I tend to make fun of them, kind of tongue in cheek. I, I I make them into idiots. And um, uh, I think, you know, I, I do get dinged every once in a while for the fact that there is racism and racial slurs and stuff like that in some of my writing. And um I understand that that's going to bother some people. It may turn them off, but I am not going to tiptoe around the ugly parts of human nature because everything I was just telling you about that alchemy, about that that magic that can happen, it can happen good and bad. People are good and people are bad. And you need to tap into all of that if you're going to write real people, real characters. Even if they're elven high lords, thousands of years old with a magic sword riding on top of a dragon you want to make them as real and visceral as you possibly can so uh if you don't role play i would highly recommend it i love it it's one of my favorite things to do it has been my whole life i've always loved to tell stories i used to tell stories with my little mego action figures if you remember those if you don't, I'm just aging into dust. I'm, I'm getting Thanos right in front of you, uh, you young whippersnappers. But I've always loved to tell stories. And uh, role-playing games are a great way to tell stories and to build a story together. It's one of the things I love about my Amber crew is we are building a world and building a story and building these characters together. It's not just me telling a story and then listening to it and responding to it. It is... It is a fusion of those two things. And that's one of the things that makes role playing so amazing and why I really hate what they're talking about doing with D and D one, but that's a story for another day. Um, get into role playing, 
Uh, and by role playing, I mean, get into something where you have some dice, pencils, paper, and a lot of friends. You can make up the rules yourself. There's a lot of great games out there that you can pick from. And I, I love 5th edition D&D. Um, I do not love the idea of them turning it into some kind of like, uh, you know, pay to win uh, video game thing. Uh, I'm not going to take part in that. And, you know, different people have different you know thoughts about that. And that's that's good. But at the heart of it, role playing can stretch your imagination as a storyteller. You can stretch your imagination as a writer and um, it can be a help. So I was really glad to read this article by Destiny Soria. And uh, I'm very excited that I got a chance to share that with you. This probably went on a little bit longer than I intended it to, but um, I'm going to put a link to her book, Fire with Fire, in the uh, description of the video. I'm also going to put a link in there to this article so you can read the whole thing yourself. Um, thank you guys so much for everything. Uh, you guys are one of the main things that I am very, very happy to be associated with in this new year. Um, I hope we can keep growing the channel. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please consider sharing it and uh, you know, click on that little bell if you want to get notified next time I have something coming out. I uh, am very thankful for you guys. And I got a lot of exciting stuff happening this year. I just finished a short story for Jonathan Mabry um, for a Weird West anthology that he's editing. It is called The Devil's Snare, and it is a Golgotha story. So I'm hoping he likes it. I hope he doesn't think it sucks. And I'm looking forward to telling you more about publication for that. And I still have my big announcement. I'm just I'm circling in a holding pattern, waiting to get clearance to land. So at some point, I hope that happens. But I hope you guys had a great holiday. I hope you have a fantastic new year. Push yourself. Do all the things that you want to do. Don't, don't wait do them and uh, hopefully if I can be of any help to you guys I would love to hear your comments in the comment section below for the video and let's have a great new year and thanks again for being here and being part of the ride all right take care I'll see you on the next video bye